Hey guys, it's T-Dubs Games, back with the, another episode for uh, our Serbia campaign here. On um, the first episode, we kind of went over the basics of Victoria 2 with the historical flavor mod. Um, finally going to unpause now, uh, make sure we got everything set up here. Uh, let's see, the budget, looking good. Military will wait to build that third unit. We have a maximum of three possible brigades uh, based on our population. Um, but our budget's kind of low right now, so we'll wait to build that one. Um, I don't know if I went over military spending in the last episode. I just kind of briefly touched on it. Um, this will encourage your pops to become soldiers and officers. Uh, I've read some strategies to leave it around 70%. So uh, I think if you put it at 100%, a lot of people become officers and not as many become soldiers. But I normally just do 100% whenever I have the funds, uh, just to encourage all around growth in our military. Um, before I unpause, I just kind of want to give you a heads up on what to look for in this game. Um, around 1845, 1850, Austria will split between the Austrian Empire and Hungary. Hungary will become independent, and they do have our cores here. Um, so in my test games, uh, I have gone to war with Austria or with Hungary because they Austria will go to war with them to put them back in the empire and sometimes Russia will join in on that war almost all the time Russia will join in um, to attack Hungary and it's a good time to get that land because uh, otherwise Austria will stay strong until Italy forms and Prussian brother war all that kind of stuff um, but that will really depend on if the Ottoman Empire remains a great power if they remain number eight sometimes Belgium overtakes them as number eight uh, and they'll lose great power status, and when they do that, they, we won't be in their sphere anymore, um, which is a good thing, but we also get an event, if they remain a great power, we get an event that pops up that lets us declare our independence from their sphere, giving us prestige, which is big because it'll raise our power ranking, it's like 15, 20, so 15 free prestige, I believe. Uh, if we take that decision, we get the prestige, raise our score, but um, on the flip side of that, uh, we lose relations with Ottomans, Russians, Austrians. I believe it's those three. Um, which kind of sucks because when we go to war with Hungary, if that, when that pops, if we get that territory and we take that decision, when we lose relations with Austria or uh, Russia, we won't, they won't have the chance to sphere us. And what we're looking for here is to join the Russian sphere of influence so that when we take the territory from Hungary, we'll have an ally. Austria won't attack us to get that territory back, their cores, because they'll typically beat Hungary, get the land back, and then they will go to war with us to reclaim this territory that they lost. If we're not allied with Russia, um, they will attack, they will declare the war, but if we're allied with Russia, they typically don't declare war because Russia will just kick the crap out of them. Um, so they're not looking to do that. So we'll see if this event fires. I like the prestige, but if we decline that event, we will lose uh, several reforms, lose some prestige, all that kind of stuff. And it's really a toss up decision. So I'll typically try to improve relations with Russia, but if that event fires, we will become hostile with them in the uh, great power sphere. So it goes like in your sphere, friendly, cordial, neutral opposed and hostile and when that happens they'll have to put 50 points in hostile 50 points in um, opposed to get back to neutral 50 to cordial 50 to friendly it's a long process and it's really not enough time I don't think they're interested in us enough to go through those steps after we take this territory from Hungary so if that decision fires we'll see how that plays out um, really a toss up here on what uh, I should do what I'm looking for here so with that, we can go ahead and unpause. I'm going to go ahead and increase relations with Russia here. And finally, unpause the game. I'll uh, play a 4 or 5 speed. And here's our first event. Moldova has increased the relations with us. This is the pop-ups I'm talking about. You don't automatically have these options enabled, but it's nice to see when other nations are trying to befriend you. If you get high relations with someone like Austria to keep them from going to war with us, look at events if they decrease relations with us. If we keep it above 100, they can't go to war with us. Um, but that's not really a strategy I'm going to go for right now. This is a Sardinia um, event here. Uh, it's really the restoration of the Italian Empire. They get some events. I don't really know what this does for us. I haven't played with the Italians. 
um, and HFM mod. Splendid Isolation is exclusive to HFM. Um, it keeps the United Kingdom practically in the United Kingdom. Uh, they can't have any great power alliances except for Portugal, Ottomans, Belgium, or Japan. So it keeps them from allying Prussia, anyone like that, which is typically what we would see in a game. Uh, I'm going to leave that on as it should be. It's very historical. That's practice that they uh, went for in real life. So uh, I think it's really cool to do a historical run through. So I'm going to do that. Uh, I'm going to keep the game running here. We have the second event here for the Papal States. They have the same restoration uh, event that the all Italian uh, nations get it, I'm pretty sure. Um, just restoring the Empire. Our budget is not looking too good right now. We're losing some uh, pounds here. Let's see what I can affect. See, already we're three months in to the game, and our administration's already almost doubled just by encouraging bureaucrats, which is big. We'll get more money from our tariffs, our uh, taxes. It's really uh, beneficial to do that um, I'm gonna drop military spending to about 35 percent see what that does for our economy maybe 30 let's go for 30 and run the game here it's looking a little better our economy's not gonna go totally in the crapper but um, once we get those bureaucrats up to 1 percent it'll look a lot better see we're gaining uh, research points here that's Probably going to stay pretty level with our education budget. Eventually, we will want to get that second or that third military unit. Um, our economy's looking good now. Bump the speed down a little bit. Just to help with the frames here. I need to upgrade my PC. That's going to be uh, the next step here. And the whole PC build. I really do love building PCs. Side note. So, a little nerd hobby of mine. So we got two more points. I'm going to go ahead and increase relations with the Russians again. Let's check out the uh, sort by rank here. We got Belgium at 44 points, and the Ottomans are at 49, 48. They just lost some military. I think their military becomes more antiquated as the game goes along, kind of mimicking the dying man of Europe uh, history tree that happens with the Ottomans. Um, they kind of decline, you know, overall power. They're not as big as they used to be. Uh, I know in EU4 they're like the ultimate power, but... All right, we got the Nicaraguan Thaw. Um, this event is a HFM mod. We'll hop over here. I'll show you kind of what happens there. Um, we have the Federal Republic of Central America, I believe. Um, it's all one nation at the beginning of the game, but early in the game, all of these smaller nations, like Nicaragua, I believe this is yes, yeah, Costa Rica, they all split off of this. Um, this dissolves. I think we got Honduras over here. Um, yeah, Honduras will split off. Guatemala, maybe. Yeah, Guatemala splits off. A whole bunch of stuff over here. They'll all... This uh, governmental fracture. Not that that's important to our gameplay, of course, since we are in the... Serbia. We are in Europe, so that won't really affect us. Let's see here. Looking good so far. These games do tend to go by pretty fast in the early game, just building up military, building up everything you need to ultimately become big. We won't really have much gameplay to go by here. Um, we won't really have much happening until around the 50s to the 70s. Um, I think I've formed Yugoslavia in like 1860, 70. You need some uh, technology to get that done. You need a lot of land, all that kind of stuff. It's not really difficult, but... Uh, the game does pause after every year, and every year our upper house rearranges. So we see we gained 8.6% reactionaries, some conservatives and liberals lost about half of their standing. Um, and our political system here, which isn't necessarily bad, but it is going to hurt our reforms, um, the amount of people that want reforms. And you do need liberals in the upper house, majority liberals, to pass most of these reforms. What I typically go for is school systems early. Oh, there's Costa Rica splitting off. Um, school systems are big. It boosts your uh, education efficiency. 
uh, which helps you get more literacy early game. Typically, vote franchise will be pretty big. Uh, I've wanted to do a uh, playthrough where I keep people from voting. Just kind of see what that's like. I do want to do a Germany gameplay um, where I keep it like that, keep the uh, empire alive. That might be pretty interesting, but normally you get... Um, pause the game here. Normally you get a lot of rebels. Uh, Narco-liberals want the right to vote and they spawn, uh, that kind of stuff. We see the Ottoman Empire has told us that the Russian Empire has bad intentions regarding our country. That means the Ottomans have spent their influence points in us, trying to sphere us. They discredited the Russian Empire, so let's take a look at that. So you see they have this discredit flag that lasts until 28th of September. They get negative 75% gain in their points they're spending. So if they have three priority, typically around 0.6 to 0.8 points per day they gain with us, but now they get 75% less. That means the Ottomans built up to get 35 points, I think is how discredit works. And that's going to make it more difficult for Russia, who's friendly now, to pull us out of the Ottoman sphere. They'll need 100 points to do that. Um, and then if they stay friendly and they get to the next 100 without the Ottomans adding us back, they'll be able to add us to their sphere, which is kind of what we want to happen here. It will hurt our economy a little bit. The Ottomans annex Tripoli, North African country, and uh, we see here that's the same thing. They accepted peace. So I'm pause the game again. Our economy's still churning along. Not really. Kind of died out there a little bit, but we did make a little money there for a little while. Go ahead and increase relations again with the Russians. Let's check out the top nine. So the Ottomans in Belgium are actually tied for eight. So if Belgium gets one more point, the Ottomans will lose great power status, but they'll have a year to get back. There they go. They just lost the status. Um, Belgium will stay as uh, technically just a secondary power until a whole year passes in which the Ottoman Empire will have the chance to reclaim their status. Uh, if that happens, uh, the timer resets until Belgium goes back on top, but typically when they fall this low, they normally don't get back. So we'll see. Belgium will probably pull away here. Yeah, they just got 53. The Ottomans are still at 52. That'll be interesting. They'll fall out of the sphere of the United Kingdom since they are a great power. You can't sphere other great power nations, obviously. So, oh, jeez, tuberculosis. This is why we need medicine, um, rush medicine, because we will lose pops. See here, we lose 4% of our population in all three of our provinces, but we do lose militancy. Um, or all four of our provinces here will suffer some uh, population changes. Really, the whole region here. Um, but we have a percent chance of each one of these happening. So, let's see here. What do we get? Yeah, we just lost our pop. That didn't feel too good there. But we are gaining more bureaucrats. We're up to 35%. Or 0.35%, I'm sorry. So, that's a pretty big gain in about a year and a half. Gaining 0.3% more bureaucrats. And like, we want to get that to point or 1.0. And then we'll go for intellectuals, and we'll want to get them to around 4.0. Uh, you get the optimal boost to your research points when they hit 2.0, but if you go ahead and go to 4%, um, you get a boost, like they keep, your literacy goes up faster, is what I'm trying to say. Got two more points here, and I increase relations with Russia once more. Have the Ottomans reclaimed the title? Oh, they're tied again. So maybe the Ottomans, see the Ottomans have no industry, they're relying really heavily on their military here. Uh, as the Belgians have a lot of industry going, they have the second and their most second, yada yada, the second most industrialized nation in the world right now, uh, and probably yeah, the United Kingdom. It's pretty impressive for Belgium. And two Sicilies gets the um, restoration event there. Moldova increased relations with us. That's this nation here. They Moldova and Wallachia have the opportunity to form Romania. And when that happens, um, they will get claims on parts of uh, Austria. Really what we like to see in uh, a game when you play a Balkan nation, uh, the destruction of the Ottoman Empire is pretty fun to witness. Um, or the Ottoman Empire, and then the Austrian Empire also goes down. Um, I think I might have mixed that up when I was talking about Romania. They get claims on the Austrian Empire. But the Ottomans might get an event. I think Russia... And several of their great powers get an event to uh, 
balkanize this area and really you see like Montenegro gets this land, Albania might come out, Bulgaria typically forms. All of this is Romania. Um, you might get some Croatia, no that's, uh, that's Ottomans, you won't get Croatia. But we might get some of this land, Bosnia might also form. And Greece normally gets Thrace, all of this area. Is that Thrace? Or that's Macedonia. Thrace is here. We got our upper house rearranged at the end of the year. Not a big change there. Let's zoom out, see what's happening here. Normally Italy will form around 1860 to 1870. I've seen it in 1850, but really just depends. And then they have claims on a lot of the northern area or the western area over here in Austria. So they'll get all of this area here and they might try to go for Croatia, Dalmatia, this area. But that's also some of our claims, which would be big to get this so we can get uh, a navy going. I know in my test game I waited too long to get the navy up and it really hurt my military score. I would have been able to sphere more nations and get Yugoslavia faster if I had a navy. Because they really do help boost your military score if you have a like, modernized navy. And now we have 4,000 in the bank. I don't think we have any loans. You know, we're still looking good. And see, as the game moves along, these graphs change. Uh, each color represents something. So the green is life needs. Uh, blue is everyday needs. I think light blue is luxury needs. But since we're running max taxes here and max tariffs, we are not seeing much of that. Um, the yellow means basic needs, I or life needs. No. I'm not actually sure. What is that? They're partially filled life needs. And red means no needs. So we don't want to see any red. Um... I do like to mess around with the tariffs eventually when our economy is more stable because what it does is you're, t you're putting a tax on incoming goods, like outside goods coming into your country. So really you're promoting your population to buy things that their other pops are purchasing or uh, constructing. So it will help your arist or artisans in theory unless they need uh, supplies to come in, I believe. But... I want to lower that eventually so that more of my people can get more of their needs met because as a country we don't really produce everything we need. Uh, our needs aren't getting filled because we're small, we don't produce everything that our population needs. So having a high tariff makes it more expensive for them to fill their needs, um, which really increases their uh, anger with us. And we have chances of rebellions, uprisings, taxes also do that too because they can't afford what they need obviously. So our economy is looking better now. You see our administration's up to 64% in just about uh, two years and about six months. All right, almost exactly six months. So was that, 30 months? We've raised our administration almost 60 points, which is pretty big. If we increase this budget, uh, I think this number might grow faster, and we also get our crime-fighting effect right there up to 44.5%. But uh, that's not really big for us right now. Our economy can't sustain that. Uh, I'm going to raise education to about 75%, though. We can. I'm going to put it at 80 we can't afford that. That is a, a good expense. I'm willing to spend that to uh, raise our literacy. I'm going to pause um, to get research faster. So I have it set to where it auto pauses after we get tech. But if you have it running, you don't get a tech for a little while. The points do build in like a bank. Um, kind of, They just build up and then they come out at 100 every day until it's empty. And then you get the base gain. Uh, whatever you get here. So don't worry if you leave it running without research for a little while. It's not that big, but uh, it's just a personal preference. So we will take medicine next to get the pop growth. That'll probably finish in 43. Oh, Lord. That's a long time. Um, I want to get this as soon as possible because I want to get idealism. And that unlocks in 1840. Idealism gives us some prestige, which is big for us as we're a smaller nation. Um, it also gives us 50% more research points. This isn't 50% of this number, it's 50% of that daily research bonus, or yeah, daily base research points. So 2.27 times 50% would be about, what, 1.1? So we'd really gain uh, an additional extra research point a day. It doesn't factor in the civilized nations, literacy, any of that. It's just the daily base research. This game's kind of finicky like that sometimes. So here we have the ascension of Queen Victoria. This is historical. Well, this event doesn't always fire in 1838. It fires any time between 1838 and 1840, I think. 
what this does is it releases Hanover from the United Kingdom sphere of influence. And I think in historical flavor mod, it puts it in the Austrian sphere, yeah. So if Prussia wants to form North Germany, they'll have to take them out. They'll have to get uh, Oldenburg and some more nations over here to form North Germany, which we kind of want to happen, because when that happens, uh, they typically go to war with Austria immediately. The Austrian Prussian North Border War, or Brothers War. Uh, I think that's around 1850, though. They'll have to have nationalism and, and imperialism research, the culture tech. Um, yeah, 1850. So when they do that, Austria will be much weaker, be easier to take uh, territory from them that we need later on. Leave this running. We're almost to one bureaucrat. So, or one percent bureaucrats. When that happens, that'll be pretty big. We can move on to promote our intellectuals, raise our literacy. And we'll get more research points, which is what we really need as a smaller country. Our literacy really sucks. So getting our people educated is huge. Typically for any nation, getting your people educated is big. I didn't mean to click on that. Let me see the budget here. Let's see, we're at 70% administration. Let's see if I can mess with these settings here. Is there a scroll? Or a way to disable. No. I just want to see if there's a way to disable like the edge scrolling. Because that does get kind of annoying sometimes. Especially recording these videos. I think it's a little jerky and doesn't really help the quality of the video. We have three uh, Diplo points. Oh, let me pause the game here. We'll go ahead and increase the Russian relations. We're at 95 now. Um, this will just help us fear them. Uh, we see here that uh, the Ottomans have fallen out of the great power. So we will not be in their sphere of influence. We will not get the prestige event. Um, we have to be in their sphere to get that event and boost our prestige. But that's not a horrible thing. Because it will mean we can join the Russian sphere of influence faster. Which will help us take the territory from Hungary and like kind of keep us safe. That will be nice. Uh, Bishopric of Montenegro. That's all nation here. They are Serbian. And they do have claims here. We do have, when we get ready to form Yugoslavia, we'll, we will need to become a great power and sphere them, or declare war on them, uh, reclaiming our cores to form Yugoslavia. But right now, I'll go ahead and accept this. Well, they don't really add much to us. They only have three, uh, or one uh, brigade here, three men. I think that's infantry. The middle one is infantry. Um, there was a zero, three thousand zero. But they, they don't really provide much benefit if we go to war with the uh, Ottomans. Greece will be more helpful. Uh, really what we're looking for is the Russians to help us of it, most of anyone though. We see now that we're not in their sphere, we're making a killing. All of our products are getting to market, they're not going to the Ottomans. So that's a huge increase. So I'll go ahead and raise education all the way to 100%. But we see our uh, life needs aren't getting met. So that does imply, I'm not sure if it works that way, where if you're in a sphere, the overlord helps you bring in... RGOs to or helps fill your needs for your population, but uh, that's highly possible. I'm not real sure on how spheres work, to be honest. I'll need to do more research. But making money like this, I feel comfortable adding that next unit of um, our army. Just a little tip if you right click on a nation, it brings up their uh, diplomacy window, versus left clicking just brings up information about the province. So here, let's go ahead and build that next unit. What do we have here? Three infantry? I'll go ahead and build a... Or two infantry? I'll go ahead and build a third infantry. Get that guy in the works. You see we're losing money now. That's our construction budget went up here. That's 100% fulfilled. What we're buying is the canned food that our units need. We have this window over here. It's really helpful. Uh, we see our armies. Our army construction here will show you what we're buying. Um, we see our bureaucrats is red. Because I bet we're at 100% efficiency. No, not yet. Um, we must be pretty close then. But I let it run to one, uh, one full percent anyway. So we're building that unit. Um, but we see that we lack the canned food. Um, let's let it run a little bit. We won't be buying canned food if I had to take my guess. Yeah, every day if you're... Like normally this will go up every day if you play as a bigger nation. But uh, in the trade window, we see... Um, all of the information about the goods. What's happening is the ranking of your country determines 
the order in which you get to buy goods from the marketplace. Where are canned goods? That's going to be a consumer good, right? Or it's right, military goods. Canned goods. So we see that the supply and the demand are equal. So what's happening is there's a lot of demand for this uh, canned goods. I bet a lot of armies are building up, a lot of countries are building up their armies and they're needing canned goods to supply their infantry and all their various units. What's happening is the 45 nations that are ahead of us are doing that, so we're not going to get the canned goods until those nations are done or until we raise, uh, raise our number. So I'll probably play to the end of 1840 here, just kind of run through this. Not really much is happening, obviously. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set Belgrade as our um, rally point for our military. So what's going to happen is all units that get constructed in any of these provinces will rally on Belgrade, and they will automatically join this army. I won't have to uh, create new units, uh, mesh units, anything like that. They'll automatically join this army. You see here, every unit has a... Serbian infantry. Um, see, this one's from Boer. That one's from Belgrade. What's happened in our uh, our max military unit? The max number we can have is determined by the amount of population per province here. So, if some of these provinces lose their soldier population, these soldiers will go yellow, and then they go red when they fully cannot reinforce. So, say. Um, I think it takes around 3,000, I'm going to take a guess, I don't know how many men they need to have, how many soldiers they need to have per uh, county to form a full brigade, I'm going to guess around 3,000, but if that number goes down, they won't have enough to reinforce this unit when it goes to battle, and the soldier will become yellow, so they'll reinforce much slower, there won't be enough men from, is this Belgrade? There won't be enough soldiers in the province of Belgrade to reinforce this unit. So if that happens, it'll be yellow that reinforce slower. If this is red, they have no men to reinforce this brigade. They have absolutely none. So this unit, when it goes to battle, it will not reinforce. Um, sometimes it might actually get completely wiped out, uh, which will suck. Our max military will go down. We'll lose military score. Lubeck defaults on their loans. Um, don't really care about this event. I'm not going to go to war with anyone for defaulting on loans. That's the one that can get kind of spammy. We see here our bureaucrats are almost at 1%. Are we at 100%? We are at 100% administration. And you see we're making about 20 pounds a month. Or a day, I'm sorry. Which uh, really helps us out here. I'm going to raise it about 50% on the military spending. See if we can encourage more soldiers. We see here our 3rd uh, Infantry Brigade has been constructed. And since we are at 1% bureaucrats, I'm going to go ahead and flip the national focus to encourage intellectuals. We want to raise our literacy. Get our research points up. Let's we'll see how quickly this rises. Uh, see, it's at 4.10. I bet we can hit around 5 or 6 by the time we hit 2% on intellectuals. We're already up 7, 0 0.7, 0 0.9. It's quickly going up. That's going to be huge. Our research, we'll see if we'll finish this in January. I think this said April when we originally picked it. But just the extra research points are really helping us. We're already at December. It's going to help us get this tech a lot faster, which is huge. I'm going to go ahead and increase relations here. I'm going to check out where we are in terms of being feared. So we're at 41%. They need to get this to 100. No other nations are friendly, so they won't be able to discredit the Russian Empire. In order to discredit a nation or ban an embassy or expel advisors, you have to be at equal level with this nation. Um, or they can be, like, Russia could be cordial and Prussia could be friendly and they could do it to us. They could uh, discredit or expel the Russian uh, advisors. The only thing is, if uh, the Ottomans still had us in their sphere, Russia couldn't discredit or expel or ban the Ottomans since we would be in their sphere. The only way to do that is they have to be equal. You can't do that to a sphere member or a sphere leader. So let's go ahead and increase relations again. Max relations here is uh, 200. 200 negative and 200 positive. See, we're already at August, you guys. We're flying through this tech. We've already gained a bunch of additional research points here. And let's see, we're gaining 0 0.01 uh, change in our literacy. So every 10 months, we gain an additional 0 0.1. Doesn't really seem big yet, but eventually we'll get it up to where we gain 0 0.1 every um, month. That's when you really know when you're booming. Well, we did cross into 1840 here, so I'll go ahead and pause the game at the end of January. 
call this video to a close. Pause the game. So what we're going to look for now, guys, is we're going to wait on Hungary to split from Austria, take our province here of, of, of I'm going to try to pronounce it again, Vaj, Vajvadnia, Vajvadina, Vajvadina. Oh, I'm not very uh, good at pronunciating things, enunciating. Um, so we'll wait on that to happen. Uh, wait on to get. We'll wait to see if we can get some more territory from the Ottomans. What we're going to wait for with the Ottomans really is the uh, Crimean War that'll fire between Russia and the Ottomans. I think you know, the UK normally joins in, but Russia typically wins that war. Uh, the Ottomans will have a um, cut down to size cast or a uh, cut down to size war goal, or the Russians will have that on the Ottomans. And what that does is it prevents them from raising military for a few years, I believe. Cuts their military all the way down. They can't have any units after it happens. Take them a while to build back up, which is big for us because we can come in and take all this territory that we need, take our claims. Typically, it's not recommended to go for all three provinces at once. It's kind of difficult to do um, to get all three of them. It's a lot. At, they're asking a lot of a small nation like us. Um, but that's what we're going to look for in the coming episodes, guys. Uh, thanks for watching episode one. Finally unpaused. Uh, look forward to seeing you in the next episode.